Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, thank you to Jeff Briggs. This video is gonna be about every question you ask me um, in your comment from my other video. So today, it's gonna be all about answering Jeff Briggs' questions about the changes to the FLL robot games. If you wanna see that, stay with me. So let me go ahead and read Jeff's questions to you guys, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer them, I'm giving you a look at what the first LEGO Elite site, what the map looks like, what the rules say, and then if you guys have any questions, hit me up. I mean, I don't wanna to profess to be some kind of expert. Um, you know, obviously, as you talk to more coaches, um, go to a scrimmage, you'll find out a lot of more information, but I think we nailed this one on the head. So let me read it to you. Um, Jeff was talking to me. How do you feel about some of the FLL changes this year? Shorter wall height, the empty area on the table for all robot equipment and no longer able to have uh, trays at the side of the table. The bonus points for that area, the change in the penalty disc being actual points for team to start. So without further ado, let's get rolling on each one of Jeff's questions. All right, Jeff, thank you for the questions on this year's City Shaper rule changes, um, just changes in general. So here I have a overview of the map or the, the mat or the playing field here. And you, can, you guys can obviously see there's a big old gap over here to the left side over here. So if you look up here, it's just saying when you're placing your field on the official table, we're going to slide the mat. Um, all the way south and to the east, which is over here. Um, and then it's asking you to, you can put a thin strip of black tape on that west edge um, to keep it down. So Jeff's asking me how I feel about this change. Um, it's definitely going to change. Uh, it was so nice having that west wall uh, to line your robot up. So it's just going to force your team now to um, either line it up against the south wall, which would be right in here, or to maybe eyeball it um, to use, uh, you know, the grid lines to line up their robot. Um, obviously, there's going to not be a back wall here, so you might have something on your robot that goes flush up against here if you're going to send your robot out this way. Um, and then it also, because the mat is shorter, it's now going to compact everything. So in years past, um, you know, the, the mat might have seemed a little bit more open. Um, I know, I remember hydrodynamics being a little cramped, um, but this one's going to now feel a lot more cramped just because, you know, you move into a smaller house with the same amount of stuff and you're going to, you know, feel a little pinch of space here so everything's going to feel a little bit more cramped and you know navigating is going to be an issue and this might be the year that your teams go to a smaller robot maybe more agile and takes up less space i don't know it's going to be one of those things where you guys might have to feel it out um, when you begin to practice and see how that goes Okay, the next thing that Jeff asked about was um, all attachments or anything that's involved with your robot um, you know, not having a table, but having it be in the home section. So Jeff, I, I think you're referring to this part right here, number 26. Uh, do store all your equipment and anything the robot brings to home in home. So if I can scroll up and just go to here. So they're basically pointing to this left side. You know, we talked about the mat being short. We're talking about that side being home. So we're talking about this section right in here, um, storing everything there. Um, I guess we'll have to just get clarification on that. Um, so assuming, Jeff, that they're not going to let you have a table, you know, to store all your attachments or anything else you might put on your robot, um, I, I think that would be okay for us. Um, in years past, we had multiple cages. We had the box robot that we would put our attachments on. 
And if we were going to do that again this year, that would be a problem because I don't think it would fit in that area. So I'm guessing this rule would just be an issue if we had multiple attachments that just wouldn't fit in that area. Um, so we'll have to just see because, you know, we haven't met yet uh, to figure out the robot and its attachments um, if that space is going to be big enough. But um, it, it always seems to be where, you know, space is um, just that's an issue where you just can't have enough space. I wish I could bring a giant 24 inch by 36 inch table so they can just lay everything out. So if they only give us home to put um, attachments, um, I guess we're just going to have to adjust. Um, you know, every time they come out with new rules, your, your team just has to adjust to it. So I will let my team know early about this matter. So just, you know, we'll, we'll just lean towards um, assuming that we're not going to be able to have a table off to the side. And, you know, if we find out that the rules state we can, fine. If not, we'll, have, we'll already have been practicing putting our um, attachments in that area. Okay, Jeff, next question. I believe this is what you were asking about. So I'm going to highlight it right here, and then I'll read it for you guys. If your robot and all of its equipment fit in the small inspection area, and I'll show you what that is in a second, the advantage for this game is five points added to each mission where you score any points. Exceptions, mission 14 doesn't apply. And for mission two, you get 10 points added instead of five. So um, I think this is what you're talking about, Jeff. Um, maybe give me a, a hit me up in the comment section if I'm off on this one. So everybody, um, let's go over this small inspection area and we're talking about the robot and all of its equipment. So let me go to the map. So this small inspection area would be, well, you know what? Let me go up here just so you don't think I am um, messing with your mind here. Let's take a look at the map and we'll just kind of confirm this. So right here, we're looking at the inspection, small inspection area. It looks like it goes from the top of the arc straight here. And it would be that lower or the west southwest section of the part where the mat doesn't go all the way you know to the uh, end of the board so now let's take a look at the map and if i'm reading this right it would be here and all of this down here um, so they're basically talking on launch if everything fits in this area including i'm assuming when they say equipment your attachments and um, you do a mission, you get five points added to whatever that mission is. And then they're talking about, uh, let me go back up to that. Sorry about this, guys. Whoops, passed it up right there. So, um, so let's go through it again. If your robot and all of its equipment fit in the small inspection area, the advantage for this game is five points. So, um, Jeff, I'm going to have to maybe look at this a little more, maybe talk to more people. So I'm trying to figure out from this what, why are they giving us the advantage? Are they, um, you know, trying to give, you know, more points to the smaller robots with that don't have, you know, 10 different attachments? Um, I'm not sure what the... I can see what the carrot is. I'm not sure why they're giving a carrot. I'm assuming it's just a size advantage so that you're not coming up with these giant monstrosities that, you know, you need a giant target tub to fit all your attachments in. Um, I'm thinking they're giving advantage to the simplified robot. I'm not sure. So you can hit me up on this one, Jeff, and let me know what you think or anybody on what you think that's talking about right there. So, um, I, I just think this is going to um, possibly help out teams that have a, you know, a small, simplified, can do a lot of things without many, many attachments, you know, if, if they can fit everything in there and, you know, they're not using a side table um, to get more points that way. So I don't know if I can have uh, an opinion on this yet. Um, it sounds interesting. Um, 
for my team last year, they had a, a tiny robot, didn't have too many attachments. So this would have been fantastic for them. But then I also had a team that had, you know, a ton of attachments. So uh, I guess we'll have to maybe see, you know, if this is a, a new rule for this year, maybe go through the competitions and see whether that is, you know, rewarding teams that have that small robot. So we'll find out. Okay, the next thing Jeff asked me about is mission 14 here with the uh, precision tokens. So you're going to have six tokens like we've done before. And anytime your team interrupts the robot, the referee basically takes a token away. So they're giving you a reward for tokens not taken away. So here we go. Um, let me go ahead and read this. If the number of pre precision tokens left on the field is six, they're giving you 60 points, 5, 45 points, 4, 30 points, 3, 20 points, 2, 10 points, and only 1, 5 points. So, Jeff, here's my feeling on that one. Um, in the past, we have gone to scrimmages and qualifiers, and um, we've seen a, a team's robot basically just mess up. And the team... And there would be like one to two minutes, sometimes a minute and a half left, and they would just let the robot sit there. Um, and, you know, I, ha I had watched th these teams before, and they had many missions that, you know, they wanted to get done. So I'm sitting there going, why are you not picking your robot up and doing more missions and just taking the penalty? Because you would think that the missions you know, they could get done, could wipe out whatever penalty um, they might incur by picking up or interrupting that robot. So in this case here, I'm just a little nervous that a team is just going to try their first mission. I hope this is not the case. Um, and if it messes up, they just sit there and go, you know what, let's just take the 60 points because that might be more than what we might get, you know, trying to do other missions. Um, I hope that's not the case because I could see this just, you know, I mean, if a team can do a 20 point mission, why would they continue to interrupt the robot, bring it back and try to get those 20 points when they can just sit there and do nothing and get the 60 points? So Jeff, I see this with mixed feelings. Um, you know, obviously, a team that's going to not have to interrupt the robot at all gets a great reward here. I just would hate to see it on the flip side. Um, reward a team for not even trying, getting more points than a team that keeps trying and trying and trying and interrupting the robot, and then they lose all these precision tokens, and then they end up, you know, they end up not getting many points at all. So that's my only takeaway from that is, oh, that'd be awesome if your team is just so precise that they never have to interrupt the robot. Um, it's just a little nervous for teams that just want to sit there and do nothing. Okay, Jeff, so finally you've asked about all of the um, building portions um, in that area to the left in, in home base or that small inspection area. I just got one thing to say about that, Jeff. I am glad I'm not going to be a referee um, because it, um, I mean, it is a little intimidating when it says right here, please take the time needed to understand the scoring examples. I mean, um, there's just so many variations here. I mean, maybe it just is going to take, um, you know, my team and I to take a look at all the possibilities here um, but it kind of reminds me of those things we used to do in math where you know you have a red shirt and white socks and black pants and you know you have to figure out all the combinations and it just was a little overwhelming when I read this the first time it hopefully it's just gonna get easier the more and more I look at it and when we actually have the models set up it'll be a lot better um, but I'm just looking at this going, how long is it going to take the refs to figure out all the points for your teams when they're looking at the small inspection area, all of these different, um, you, you know, point variations for in the circle, partly touching the circle, 
um, stacked a certain height. Um, and then they have to look at your uh, precision um, discs. I'm just overwhelmed and I'm glad I'm not going to be a ref. Um, it's just going to be one of those things where you might have to just know how many points your team can get and, you know, question, you know, the total from there. But I'm overwhelmed and I hope it gets easier the more and more I see it and look at it. So that's the best I can do on that part, Jeff. The last one, Jeff, that I could not find and you might have to hit me up in the comments section is the wall height difference. I looked, maybe I just didn't look good enough, but if you can let me know where that is, I'd love to be able to take a look at that. Um, to be honest with you, Jeff, on that, if they did change the, you know, the difference on the wall, the height of it, um, I don't know if that would affect us because we don't usually mess with the wall. Um, you know, we might back up into it, but we don't hang on to it. We don't do anything weird with the wall. So two things let me know where that is in the rules where it changed and the second thing is if it did change uh, my teams really don't depend on the wall that much that i can remember um, we'll find out you know if we do go to a competition and see if that does anything but i don't i don't foresee it being an issue i hope not okay so hopefully jeff i answered all your questions um thanks for bringing all this up because you know some of those differences are huge, you know, like the mat being, a, you know, smaller than normal. So for all of you that didn't know these changes, hopefully this was enlightening. Thanks again, Jeff. And uh, yeah, let's get moving on these changes. We'll see if it's a big deal or not. I think it's interesting. And then, you know, maybe at the end of the, the season, we'll, you know, not that we have any, any effect on the rule being changed, but, you know, we can see if it was a good thing or not especially those precision discs. Anyway, I am Mr. Hino from Mission Lego Robotics. I am out.